This is big banks are getting ready to kick off earnings season tomorrow in the midst of hauling in record profits themselves. Here now to weigh in Heritage Capital's president, Paul Schatz, and the case for dividend growth author, David Bonson. Hey, David, let me start with you. Um, Warren, uh, this new tax, you know, she uses Amazon as the example, but it's going to hit 1,200 companies. Uh, is there a problem, though, when a company like Amazon pays zero f- federal taxes? No, listen, the only reason they didn't pay taxes is because of CapEx and, and R&D. They're not loopholes. What, what she's talking about is what President Trump fixed. They got rid of all the loopholes. They left two, and I won't get into them now. There's two I wish they'd gotten rid of. That's it. The issue is that they're able to expense for capital expenditures. So this instant depreciation, she doesn't like that. But she, the way she's positioning, it's very dishonest. And what you're talking about is an investment that creates jobs and opportunity. And productivity. And productivity. And then that feeds on itself for more jobs and more opportunities. Right, Paul? What she wants to do is, what she's saying is, she and her cronies can spend the money better than corporate that's America right. can. That, that's the bottom that's line. That's exactly right. In the history of this country, the government's never proved they can spend our dollars better than corporate America can. In other words, she thinks that socialism or the government can spend it better than capitalism. And I would argue that on a leverage basis, right. think of what the free market does better than government. But she also thinks that that is the government's money, right? Because if you go back to the video that made her famous in the first place, you didn't build that. She doesn't believe that corporate America or individual success is on the people that achieve it anyway. Somehow, because uh, you, you drove to work, that, that belongs to everyone. It's the, it's the public domain. Well, and, you know, they're just sending the clip, Disney's not going to like this. Disney doesn't have to worry about it because this message is not going to get Elizabeth Warren <laughs> elected. Right. This is a bad message for jobs and for consumers. Let's talk about the earnings season. It kicks off tomorrow. I think this is what the market's been waiting for. We know estimates have come way down. Financials, they've been a laggard. They've been a big disappointment. The best performance today. What are, we, what are you expecting? I think lately analysts are somewhat falling over themselves to play catch up with price. Mm. So they want to cover their rear ends to make sure they don't look foolish like they usually do as as stocks run into earnings. Look, you know, financials, they've got a couple of headwinds, as we know. Right. So the economy is slowing. You know, problem number one. And everyone's talked about the yield curve for I don't know how long. I mean, financials, best case for financials is that they become market performers, which I think people are kind of in the hope and pray mode. I, th- I don't think it's going to be a blockbuster earnings season. Right. I-, I think w- we are slow. We are decelerating. Right. I don't think we're tipping into recession right now, but we're decelerating. I think the key really is the revenue Decelerating from a phenomenal year. Yeah, I think we're, we're So it we're won't de- be as phenomenal as last year. But I would, the, only, the only caveat I'd throw in is I really think it will not be all monolithic, that you will have standout performers in the financial sector that outperform some of the others. You know who those would be? I, I don't know, but I really think that if you look to the ones that are growing their dividend, not to, and I, you know I'm not... Sure the book here because I've been saying this for two years with you. But when you look at J.P. Morgan growing their dividend 40 percent in the third quarter last year, they're telling you they believe yield curve or not, yep. they can still grow earnings organically. I yep. would look at J.P. Morgan. The case for dividend growth, your latest blockbuster, yep. by the way. Um, uh, uh, IPO season is among us also. Uh, Lyft uh, was a poorly handled IPO, in my opinion. I don't think it's an indictment necessarily in a company or IPOs. Today, a new company went public, uh, Page Duty. It was priced between 21 and 23. IPO 24 opened up 50% higher. Which one of those, David, will be the reflection of IPO season? Page duty or lift? Uh, it will end up being somewhere in between because Lyft was overpriced and they were underpriced. And, and it's never a good thing when a stock pops 50% day one. They, a lot of money got left on the table for some of the early investors. But I think that uh, you're going to have a mixed bag of IPOs. In, in the meantime, Uber and Pinterest now are lowering their IPO price, knowing that they're going to leave money on the table, but knowing the public may not hate them for it. There's a big difference, though. Yeah. T- today you have an under the, under the radar IPO. Right. Those were so public oversubscribed. I think that That's today's IPO is more. Gentlemen, I wish we had more time, but we don't. 